Greetings, folks. Nice to see you today. My name is Dustin Cormier, and welcome to How to Rock Astrology. Today, we are going to be talking about what is the psychoerotic chemistry like of a person with the Sun in Scorpio and Mars in Sagittarius. Some interesting things to be said about this combination. I'm going to say my own few words about it and then afterwards we're going to start reading from erotic astrology your sex secrets revealed by phyllis vega kind of just add a little bit of extra guff to our game here <clears throat> the sun in scorpio uh this is powerful by sign powerful by what's called dignity because the Sun and Scorpio are best friends. Excuse me. Maybe not best friends, but they're friends. The reason for this... Excuse me. I'm ah, got to get the gas out. The reason for this is because... Have you ever noticed that all of the signs that rule fire and water signs kind of are like together in a way? Uh, they're all led by the inspiration of the soul. So this is... Jupiter uh, rules Sagittarius and Pisces, fire and water. Mars rules Aries and Scorpio, fire and water. Also, the Sun rules Leo and Cancer rules, uh, the Moon rules Cancer. So, Sun, Moon, Jupiter, and Mars all deal with the growth of the self and the expression of the self for its own sake, without thinking so much about the other person or about the ways the art of lovemaking, fire signs and water signs are more about what can, how can I apply this to myself? Uh, and what does it mean for myself? So Mars and Scorpio is good by dignity because it's in the sign of a friend, Mars. And so therefore the king is thinking in a certain way about Expand, the expansion of Scorpio, the the phoenix energy, getting through the crap, pushing through crap in order to get the deepest value from whatever you involve yourself with, looking for a lover who brings out the best in you and will even push you to be your best. This all comes from Mars refining the nature of the sun being in Scorpio. The only problem with the sun in Scorpio is that it's right next door to its debilitation point and at that's Libra. This person is <clears throat> you being Sun in Scorpio, Mars in Sagittarius. You have a double. The fact that debilitation and exaltation work by proximity, it sucks for your Sun, but it's good for your Mars because your Mars is also right next door to Capricorn. So what am I? What do I mean by this? Uh, the fact that the Sun is right next door to Libra means that Scorpio really does think about other people. It thinks about how others are and how I can serve them, but also how I can get on top of them and how I can build on what I am through others. It's the second house from Libra. Uh, so there's an emphasis on others. The king of the country is looking at others, looking at the other people and thinking, how can I apply myself? How can I apply these characteristics of others to myself? But they are looking at the other person. They are looking at the group. Scorpio is obsessed with looking at the group and looking at the relationship. And how does this relationship reflect on me? Uh, so this is the sun being debilitated in Libra shows that they're listening to other people and not listening to themselves. Scorpio's devotion is beautiful. But they can lose themselves, they can lose their own sense of their own power, their own sense of themselves by being so fixated on having power on the other person. They manipulate in a way, not necessarily manipulate in a bad way, but it's more like they psychologically, they spend a lot of time and energy psychologically understanding the ways and mind of their partner so that they can know their power points in the relationship and how they can shift and move the power between the two in the relationship to direct them having some kind of psychological seat of power which makes them feel secure they give 
they on one hand they learn about the psyche about the other person in order that they can secure the love of that other person and then they do apply it and they employ it to keep that security and it's a warm hug when you've got a Scorpio looking out for what they understand to be your best interests and to what makes you feel good and secure and all these things it's just that they spend a lot of energy obsessively looking into the, what they're what will secure them in a relationship whereas the sun does better when it's in aries when it's spontaneous when it's unfurling when it's un unquestioned like it's unobstructed it's unapologetic that's the word i'm looking for it's unapologetic of its expansion and its inspiration and it lives for its inspiration first and seeks to see others after first coming from its inspiration sun and scorpio is hurt by the fact that it's close to libra but this is greatly reduced by mars in sagittarius here mars in sagittarius wears its heart on its sleeve the sun in scorpio wants to give itself in service and surrender to a divine connection to somebody mars in sagittarius does a lot to snap that sun out of its idealism out of looking at the other people and the other persons it snaps them out of their illusionment and disillusionment about others so the mars in sagittarius wants to get a visceral felt experience of the other person and of their own contribution to a relationship um so the mars in sagittarius feels really uh not not j they, they don't allow themselves to lose their interest their intriguing inspiration and ambition because they want so bad to be loved by this person they'll wear their heart and they'll say i'll love you deeply and i will be absorbed by you the mars and sagittarius knows its own scorpionic soul here and the mars is in sagittarius will be forthright and say i'm this type of person who's rather quiet and i know what's good for me and i can talk to you about like you know this is what i'm like and what are you like and does this work and whatever they're more they're more garrulous or uh easy to talk to uh than than other scorpios um because they want to be upfront about what makes them happy and what makes you happy but you know they add themselves they don't allow the fact that the sun is close to its debilitation point in libra they don't allow the fact that they think so obsessively about the other person's needs to compromise their own needs so the mars and sagittarius here knows that you know a tree gives of its fruit best when it has deep roots in itself and this is a mars which knows what side it's of the of its bread that it's buttered on <clears throat> or <clears throat> it knows what side of his bread is buttered it knows its good capacities and it knows what it can contribute in a relationship to to make it spicy and enticing and to bring to draw the the partner to them by what they are not just by their devotion not just by their service not just by their strength and pushing and gritting and working hard to get their money and all these things that scorpios can often do scorpios often win by showing this devotion and saying look how hard i worked for you how can you compromise that it's the mars and sagittarius here that says not only do i i'm willing to serve for you but like i think you're really going to enjoy this next adventure that we have happening <laughs> you know they've got a human enjoyment element to it that loosens up a bit of the heavy scorpionic thing not only that what else i wanted to say here is that scorpio can be so obsessed with trying to know about the person that they can get lost in their head about trying to to secure all this stuff mars and sagittarius gives this person an exploration factor so that you aren't just hugging familiarly to what makes you feel good and secure uh, you're going outside the boundaries and testing the other partner's boundaries and and you can be very hard with your mars here uh and sharp but it's for the sake of 
look, I don't want to, we don't want to waste each other's time. Love making is very important to me. Sacrifice and surrender and devotion is very important to me. And I'm that type of person. So this is how I apply myself. These are the things that I'm interested in. Do, that, do they interest you? Can we make it work together? Because I am forthright about the fact that I know what I know and what I love and who I would like to love. It's a great place, great consciousness to have for a Scorpio. <clears throat> the Scorp the Sagittarius Mars really uh, um, compensates for the sun being so close to its debilitation point. Brings a strength, brings a truth, and a willingness to change and evolve in the relationship. Whereas Scorpio tries to obsessively find out values that it can bring to the relationship and then holds on to those. And then the lovers, you know, as you develop in a relationship, what becomes important changes. And some Scorpios think, oh my God, my heart's beating because this person started loving me because I had money or because I was this way, I would express this type of personality. Now I want to change in my life and I don't know if the, the lover's going to be able to accept this change because I originally promised them to devote to them this type of energy. It's the Mars and Sagittarius that right from the start is not going to base a love relationship only on their the promise that they can serve the other person, the promise that they are attracted to the other person. There's a dignity here that says you got to be you got to be respectable to me too. You got to be good for me cuz I got the power and I'm a fucking good lover. And I'm a guy, and I put my energy towards good places. This is hugely do, uh, uh, hugely because of the fact that the sun in Scorpio is ruled by Mars. And this Mars is going through the buoyant sign of Sagittarius. So since Mars is the dispositor of the sun here, Mars is in Sagittarius, ruled by J buoyant Jupiter. So the sun energy is, is more respectable than some Scorpios are inclined to be. Scorpio just wants to win what's tough and to slowly manipulate and find ways to hack at this person and try and wrangle them for this, this deep psychological security's sake. And the Mars here will stop that from being too loving love for love's sake It'll bring it out and explore different people. You might sow a lot of wild oats when you're younger. You might try different people, different types of lovers, go on lots of dates, and this will enrich your experience of what you want to be as a lover until eventually when you do finally find that person who you want to drop it all for, you will be well-versed in what makes you happy, and you'll be well-versed in things that you can do to expand and increase all of the love that you can have with this one person that you secure. So Scorpio, they like with this combination, Scorpio is committed, but the Sagittarius expands with it within that commitment. It can be make it very juicy, although it can be flirty. And what's weird about this f f combination is that the Scorpio wants to be committed and will show commitment with a person and they'll seem to be going, but the Scorpio will have an icy, like the Sagittarius is willing to explore. Let's do it. Let's date. Let's go out for a movie. I'll spend the money. I'm generous and, and I'm generous with my time. And I will do all these things with you. But there will be a way back there, there will be a heart that is looking for a heart of gold. Scorp uh, Neil Young was a Scorpio and he wrote Heart of Gold. I've been a miner for a heart of gold and I'm getting old. And I better find that perfect one at some point. They're looking for really the best I person, ideal, the best thing to devote themselves to. Uh, and they will dig and dig and dig until they get it. And some Scorpios will refuse to get into a relationship until they find that perfect lover, which is part of the reason why the, the sun is close to its debilitation in Libra here. They might screw themselves out of exploring what could be a great lover. So this Mars and Sagittarius saves this from happening. They're willing to explore. Let's fucking date. Fuck it. Let's just do it. And she want to just, I don't know, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm fucking free. Uh, after work, after this time, yeah, let's just like hang out and see where it goes. And then they go. And the Scorpio is still very deeply 
So this is the point, is that they'll play the game and they'll have fun, but the Scorpio will, some part of them, they'll be demonstrative and fun, but some part of them will be best, will not show all their whole hand, will not fully roll with you, and they might even have deep bedroom fiasco connections with several people before they finally give their heart to the one person that they think will get the most investment return of their passion and their love and joy and surrender in the long run. And that's when they'll finally stick it to that one person. And even then, they will, they'll enjoy a flirtatious energy in a certain way. But it'll ultimately be towards idealistic, ambitious uses of the sun. We're going to read later on that this is a person who actually considers celibacy to be an intriguing thing. They, it's a very sexual energy, but they like to transmute this energy because the, the sun ego here is expressing through Scorpio, and Scorpio leans on Mars, and this Mars is being put to idealism, high, greatest use of my sexual Mars energy. And sometimes the best use of your sexual Mars energy is not just sex. It's transmuting it to something better than sex, to be the greatest summation of all the human experiences possible. And this could be a person who you, is not only just about sex, but will take sexual energy in the bedroom and transmute it. So, for example, when this person's writing a song, they can think about the juicy energy of the relationship that they have with their partner and think about how it relates universally to all possible experiences with all people. And if they had a choice, they might say, Honey, I know you're... You've, <laughs> it's like the, their, 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 the lover comes up to them in some erotic lingerie and they're clearly in the mood they surprise them this is a sun in scorpio with mars and sagittarius who is like honey that is so hot you are really giving a bone giving me a hugest boner right now i've just gotta i gotta write this i gotta write this thing down I'll, it'll be quick but i've gotta write it down and you're super turning me on I've just gotta finish this idea for this song that i'm writing it's like you know like even though they get riled, riled up by that, they will still discipline themselves to put their energy towards things which will bring them to the heights of the best use of their sexual energy. <clears throat> so um, already we've talked a lot just about Scorpio, Sagittarius energy in general here. I'm going to start reading little bits of excerpts from Erotic Astrology by Phyllis Vega. This is just particularly the turn-ons and turn-offs of Scorpio. We're going to see how Scorpio is, the Scorpio Sun erotic psyche, and then we're going to add and develop on what does Mars and Sagittarius bring to this consciousness. We read that the red-hot sex drive and physical prowess of Scorpio is legendary. You possess a lusty libido and you thoroughly enjoy giving and receiving sensual pleasure. Any lover stepping into your lair as a Scorpio had better be well prepared, because keeping up with you in between the sheets is an absolute must. Scorpio responds to an uninhibited bed partner who entices with provocative verbal suggestions and teasing sexual games, even power plays and these th kind of things where the Scorpio wants to feel, Scorpio wants to be in its power, but have the a sensation of being wrenched out of their power by the undeniable wild passion that they have for their love object. Where the love object has them wrapped around their finger. They want to have that experience, but ultimately say like, that was hot, that was super cute, but ultimately I'm kind of, you're kind of wrapped around my finger. It should be a bit of both, ultimately, but the Sagittarian Mars ego here really wants to be the one with you wrapped around my finger. Your sensuous nature makes any kind of massage an erotic experience for you. It can serve as a rousing foreplay for steamy lovemaking, taking you to the very edge of intense sensual pleasure. Since Scorpio is the most sexually charged of all zodiac signs, your nether regions are extremely sensitive. Any stimulation down below gets you incredibly aroused. Consequently, many a bedroom massage with a Scorpio 
has to be abandoned halfway through. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio and can relate, can confirm. Especially if you go around our butt. If you tickle around the butt, it's like slam the fist. Okay, this is done now. Fuck me, please. <laughs> Scorpio life. Um, Sagittarius can actually add also a sensitivity in the legs, the thighs, thigh area. Start squeezing and kissing around here, and it adds like a that like horse thing that Sagittarius does. Now we've just read about a, just a tiny bit about just the psyche of Scorpio. Now we're going to read from the same book. What does the Sagittarius, the high-minded idealism of Sagittarius, add to the raw magnetism and animal nature of Scorpio? These are both very animal types, actually. Sagittarius being the centaur with four legs, trying to refine it towards the idealism of humanity and man and metaphysics and tantra even. This can make for a tantric personality who's interested in the art of lovemaking and the art of expanding on the depths of pleasure in very juicy, high-minded ways. So let's read about it. This is Sun and Scorpio with Mars and Sagittarius. Sagittarius' adventurous nature makes you eager to expand your erotic horizons. However, once you've made a commitment, you stick with it. This is a Scorpio who wants to expand versatility and enjoyment and exploration, going traveling and doing all these different things with one dedicated heart of gold who they can share it all with and laugh about it when they're old friends sitting on a bench between bookends, just like uh, Paul Simon wrote in that song, Old Friends, who is also a Scorpio, by the way. Despite Scorpio's reputation for smoldering sexuality, you, having Mars in Sagittarius, you're quite capable of sublimating your strong physical desires when it suits your purpose. In fact, this might even be a person for whom if there's a kink vibe going on, you know, like Sagittarius, Mars, and even just Scorpio, sometimes just wants to fuck and just fucking get it out. Just to get that orgiastic experience and go right to the wild thing. But this is a Sagittarius which can plane it out and say, I want that thing, but whew, I will put the bone on the dog's nose and the dog will heal and I will add that d discipline, the high-minded refinement in the bedroom so it's more than just raw animal fucking it's something else possibly fun kinky bondagey type of things blindfolds experimentation of many different sorts so there's a refinement and an art and a grace combined with this animal that's just like ready to go for its own sake it's really you know, the, the fact of Sagittarius representing the four-legged animal transmuting into the refinement of human intelligence. Scorpio is the 12th house. Scorpio is really that four-legged raw animal in a lot of ways. So this, the sun's magnetism and animal nature being pulled into its highest expression through that Mars and Sagittarius. While you realize the potency of your sexual mag of your magnetic sexual appear appeal, blah, sorry. While you realize the potency of your magnetic sex appeal, you also understand the power of celibacy. In the bedroom and elsewhere, you have your own way of doing things. An air of mystery and secrecy guards your private feelings. So even your soulmate may have difficulty understanding what motivates you. It's an interesting thing. The sun is kind of in the 12th house from the Mars here. And the sun, the ego, is just a bit behind the action. And there is action. So this action of Sagittarius Mars is happening. And they're ambitious. And they're moving towards all these things. But the Scorpio, the mind, the heart, the devotion, is secretly behind all this action that's happening on the surface. 
the engagement, the sexuality, the magnetism that they pull around and flail around, they're kind of one step behind it. And there's a secrecy. There's an air of mystery that you might not, your soulmate, your person, any lover who tries to get to the depths of you might not fully get to those depths right away. You got to kind of pull it out. Uh, generally, though, I think that with the Mars and Sagittarius here, there is a willingness to really talk and go. Once you trust the person, you really do want to explore the fringes of your each other's minds and see where your minds are really at on this or that subject, this or that practice, this or that sexual act. Could be a fun, juicy time. It's a good combination. Uh, the Mars and Saturn here really work together very well to bring out the best in each other. So I hope you guys dug that. Uh, I'm Dustin Cormier for How to Rock Astrology. Uh, this was Sun in Scorpio with Mars in Sagittarius. If you dug it, let me know. Like, comment. Uh, and if you did enjoy, if you're watching for the first time, feel free to subscribe and to keep your eyes peeled because there's always more fun stuff similar to this vein coming along in the world of Dustin Cormier and How to Rock Astrology. In fact, if you're a Scorpio with this combination, you might get something out of my sextrology series that I've already done, uh, talking about the sexual psyche of Scorpio. Uh, so if uh, you dug this, check that video out as well. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.